Greetings from Kalsagori, from Mickey, Aurora, and from me. Well, 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 lots of ground to cover today. So without further ado, I am going to plunge right in. And the very first thing I'm going to say is, I need to thank the anonymous person who sent me those beautiful flowers with the following note, no name, no address, no nothing, to congratulate and chair you after your recent ordeal from one of your YouTube subscribers with love and appreciation. This is the handwriting. Whoever you are, thank you so much. You have no idea what it has meant to me. I suspect the ordeal being referred to is the three and a half years of the ringer through which Alison Phillips, the editor of the Daily Mirror, and Darren Lewis, the writer and, uh, and associate editor of the Daily Mirror, put me through by telling such vicious lies about me and then sending me lots of unwanted presents. And thank you so much for sending me a very <laughs> wonderful present to whomever it is who has sent that. I cannot tell you how touched I am. And now, without further ado, I am going to read from Bullen Meadows who says, Lady C, thank you for your intelligent, entertaining and on-point videos. That head, I'm sorry, it's gonna really swell. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's nice to be appreciated. And I do try to be entertaining and to stick to the point and Hopefully, I am intelligent, so thank you, but it's really nice to hear it. And hopefully, the head won't get too swollen. You have a way with words and wit, and I enjoy watching your videos every week. Oh, my goodness. Aurora, come back up here. Aurora's just jumped out. She's worried that my head is going to knock her out of the way. Oh. Harry has lost his security case against the UK government. Please, can we have your views on this? Furthermore, it seems to me that his lawyers were not representing him or advising him effectively. Meghan won her court case regarding the letter to her father. Harry has several other court cases ongoing. What are the prospects of these in your view? Do you do they use the same legal team? And do you think Meghan has much involvement in Harry's cases and which ones to pursue? Well, my understanding is that she micromanages everything and interferes with everything and has made absolutely sure that she has directed him in the path she has wished him to go. Shades of Iago and Othello and we know how disastrously that ended and we can see how disastrously all of this is going to end and how disastrously it has been going under her ministrations and by his own admission her direction because remember even in the Oprah interview he had no idea he was trapped until Maxie Baby pointed it out to him Mm, she's pointed out an awful lot. David Sherbone, who is representing him, represented her. He is a very effective KC, King's Counsel. 
Well, he is instructed by solicitors who, whom Harry has instructed. Doubtless, Rachel Zane has a lot of input into it. However, she had an advantage with Mr. Justice Warby because Mr. Justice Warby thought he was dealing with a proper member of the royal family and that it was somebody with integrity whose word could be trusted. And by the time he discovered that that wasn't the case, uh, he had already been led down a certain garden path. And also she had a much stronger case than Harry has. Meghan, remember, entrapped her father brilliantly. She is the one who perverted the late Queen and the Prince of Wales as he then was desire for her to write to her father to mend fences and by her own admission she wrote to her father to destroy the relationship. When the letter remained buried she resurrected it through five of her friends and took made them take it to People magazine of course all without her knowledge consent and approval yeah and pigs fly in fact Here's a pig flying right now. Oh, piggy, 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 piggy. Flying like Megsy Davies lies. One porky pie after another goes flying. Mm, yeah. And nevertheless, she entrapped her father and the mail on Sunday did go too far because it did breach her copyright by quoting too much of the letter. So she always had a strong case from that point of view. She had a very weak case from the point of view of privacy, but Mr. Justice Warby did not realize that she leaks like a sieve to the press. Everybody now knows it. But he and many people, presumably many of you who are listening to this, didn't realize at the time that Meghan is really Southern Water Company leaks everywhere. That's no longer the case with Harry. Harry has very weak cases, all encouraged by Meghan. This one case that he has lost is but one of many. And this was really, he was trying to get Mr. Justice Chamberlain to allow him to go after Ravik on the basis of the fact that Ravik was being prejudicial against him and Mr. Justice Chamberlain was having no part of it. He made it absolutely clear that Harry's legal argument was untenable. Well, his lawyers ran the legal argument. This, what happens in this country is the solicitor instructs the barrister, the barrister advises upon the law, the solicitor instructs the barrister and the barrister argues the case accordingly. All of which is done upon the instruction of the client. That's right, the client is ultimately responsible for what is happening. Now, usually clients don't know the law and they are led, so to speak, by their legal advisors. However, Megan is a legal expert. Let's not forget that. Rachel Zane, slap him once, slap him twice, slap him again. Harry's chances of winning the others, I would have said, rather slight. Alistair Campbell, who was Tony Blair's 
our right-hand man and minister of propaganda. And I actually have to tell you, I've met Alistair Campbell and I like him. I don't necessarily agree with all of his political views, but he is a very pleasant person to meet. And he and his wife are dog lovers. Now that says a lot, doesn't it? So, <laughs> just for what that's worth. So, we do have that in common. And he has just given evidence about the fact that Piers Morgan, when Tony Blair was in government, was not as supportive of the Labour Party's policies as he, Piers Morgan, led Tony Blair and Alistair Campbell to believe. So what does that have to do with Harry's case? Absolutely nothing. Of course, they will argue that it goes to character. But he was also saying that Piers was benefiting from wiretapping and phone hacking. An opinion, no proof, and then also nothing to do with Harry. You know, the fact that Bonnie and Clyde killed a bank employee in one state doesn't mean that they killed bank employees in all states. So, really, there is a principle in the law that you need to actually prove that somebody did something to you, not that they just generally did it, and therefore, of course, <laughs> they're guilty of what you allege they did to you. This one loss has cost Harry over £500,000. And this is a small loss. Is he likely to lose against Mirror News newspapers? I hope so. And as everybody knows, I have no brief for Mirror Group newspapers. But Harry is abusing the law. Is he going to win against mirror, uh, associated newspapers? I would sincerely hope not. Again, his case is a fabrication based upon the words of a fraudster and the witness statement of a fraudster, a convicted fraudster. <laughs> I mean, then there is news group which is the Times, the Sun, etc. Again, the case has little merit, if any. And as for the overall case against the Home Office in terms of his security, because this loss was just a small part of the overall case, what makes Harry think? that he is entitled to something that he is not entitled to, his self-importance. So I don't see him prevailing. I see him losing a lot of money and I will be delighted when he does it because he is a vexatious litigant. He has always been aggressive. Meghan has encouraged him because she is even more aggressive than he is. And she fancies herself a hotshot lawyer, when in fact she's anything but, although she is a lot cleverer than he is. So, never say never says. Lady C, what are your thoughts on Meghan ducking out of receiving a Gracie Award last night, despite being expected to attend? <laughs> well... I made a phone call or two. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm a wicked, wicked girl, but I did make a phone call or two. And <laughs> poor Maxie baby. 
Mickey, come here and console Marty. Marty has to cry on Megsy Baby's behalf. Evidently, there were several good reasons for Megan not attending. First of all, there has been the fiasco that took place in New York, although this event was in LA. And they are both bruised by this fiasco that took place a few days ago. So that's one reason for lying low. Another reason for lying low is that Megan evidently expressed the view to someone who it was handed on to me that she thought, why should I go and be amongst all of those third rate people? I mean, Christina Applegate, who's Christina Applegate? Well, evidently Christina Applegate, who of course is 10 years older than Megan and was in the cast of Married With Children, which Thomas Markle Sr. worked upon and where Megan for a 10 year period, according to her, and it was actually fewer than 10 years, was there every single afternoon after school while her father was taking care of her and her mother was absent, absent. And I'm not gonna go any further down that route. I have to tell you, it's really difficult to have a good view when the view is obscured. But more than that, I don't think I need to go into. So, she didn't want to be there to run across Christina Applegate, evidently. Not that she is embarrassed, evidently, but that she was worried that the, according to her optics, wouldn't look good. And that if she and Christina Applegate had been captured in photographs together, that this would have played badly with the brand. So that means that she has got advice to not attend. And she has taken it. Of course, she's taken it the way she took not attending the coronation because she doesn't want to be mortified in front of the whole world. She may be unembarrassable, when, but when she is in the situation that is disagreeable and unpleasant, she has to have her dander up <clears throat> and nobody likes to have their dander up if it's not necessary, not even a tungsten creature like Meghan Markle. Somebody who knows her also made the point that she, it, the penny has dropped with her, that Nikki Pretty, her childhood friend who dumped her over the way she treated Trevor is possibly dif distantly related to Christina Applegate. How is this? Evidently, Christina Applegate's mother is another actress called Nancy Pretty, who starred in The Waltons. So Nancy Pretty starred in a very famous show Christina Applegate starred in a very famous show, 
both of these were super duper successes televisually. They weren't cable shows like Suits. So hopefully that answers the question. But before leaving it, may I say that I rather liked the announcement put out about the Gracie Awards because they said, as we close out Women's History Month, it is important to remember the legacy of Gracie Allen. Now, I didn't know her, but I did meet her, her, her widower. So I think, but I've mentioned this before, George Burns. He was very dapper and his press agent, Gertrude Brooks, was a friend of, as, as was of a friend of my guardian, Francis McCall, and was also the press agent for Nancy Ames. That's how I met him the, at a show that they were all taping. And I continue the quote. The legacy of Gracie Allen, who was lovely, evidently, the inspiration behind these esteemed awards. This year's recipients exemplify Gracie Allen's spirit through their exceptional talent, innovation, and vision. So said the president, Becky Brooks. Then she continued, their steadfast dedication to their craft and their tenacious resolve to break boundaries serve as a compelling testament to the essential role women play in molding the cultural landscape. We eagerly anticipate celebrating their outstanding accomplishments. And evidently, it reached back to Megsy Baby that some of the recipients didn't want to be in the same room as her. Poor Megsy baby, everybody's so against her. <laughs> Mr. DeMille, I just don't know what I'm going to do. I'm so grief stricken. I mean, I've got to get ready for my close up. But I mean, why does everybody hate me so? I mean, I'm just such a wonderful person, one act of compassion and cruelty at a time, one demonstration of virtue and viciousness at a time, one truth, spelled L-I-E, at a time. What am I going to do, Mr. DeVille? What am I going to do? I just don't understand it. I've got such integrity. I'm just like Philip Schofield. I mean, he and I were being victimized. He's obviously a man of color because I'm victimized because I'm a woman of color. And he's got to be victimized because he's a man of color. Or maybe it's because he's a flaming queen who was a total fraud and pretended to be otherwise in much the same way that I'm a flaming jerk pretending to be otherwise. But I didn't say that, did I, Mr. DeMille? No. Somebody else said it. I think it's that mean lady Colin Campbell that jumped into my mouth and said it instead of me. What am I going to do? Everybody speaks the truth. I mean lies about me. Oh, terrible. Giselle says, Lady C, why is it that both Harry and the wife can use the HRH on their court documents when the Queen told them they were not to use them? This is confusing. It's actually not confusing to me. It may be confusing to you because I think you have slightly misunderstood what the Queen said. She did not deprive them of their HRH status. She simply said they couldn't use it out and about commercially and generally. But court documents require 
your correct name and proper rank. And that's why they can use it. And that's why they should use it. There is no such individual as Meghan of the Duchess of Sussex. For court documents, she is Her Royal Highness the Duchess of Sussex. And he is His Royal Highness the Prince Henry Duke of Sussex. Okay, I hope that clarifies it. They still have the rank. They're simply not allowed to abuse it, exploit it, and by and large, indulge it. Sandy Robinson says, Lady C, love your videos and intellect and knowledge and straight talk, pulling no punches. Thank you. <laughs> I love it. Sorry, right? I do love my head getting swollen. You always look lovely. Oh my goodness, my head is going to burst. But I particularly liked your outfit today. Why in the world would anyone take a crack at Catherine, who is such a beautiful person inside and out, always doing her duty, rearing her children? Well... Jealousy, envy, and the desire to bring somebody who is flourishing brilliantly down. That's what it's all about. Meghan has her supporters. Now, when Disney made The Little Mermaid, which evidently has done very badly. Uh, I mean, these projects are months and years in the making. So if they have made a misjudgment in the early days, which they clearly did, uh, being supportive of Meghan and her vicious, vitriolic, vengeful, nasty, bring them down stance against the royal family, which they thought was going to be a winning number and it's turned out that they are on a losing a wicket. Well, it's too late to alter it because this would have been decided, the script would have been decided at least two years ago when Meghan and Harry were still riding high and Catherine was flourishing, but all Meghan's supporters and Meghan thought they could knock Catherine out of the running by denigrating her, belittling her, lying about her and mocking her and making her look ridiculous. In fact, they've ended up making themselves make, look ridiculous and Meghan has ended up making herself look ridiculous. But that's why they did it. Now, in the original Disney movie, the response evidently is Mildred, Diana, Rachel, And there is no nasty put down the way there is in this version where it's they've got rid of rid of the Mildred, they've kept in the Diana, but Rachel is too close to Rachel Zane, otherwise known as Megan, creepy crawly, Duchess of Sussex. And there's also another issue. There are other people going after Catherine as well in the press now because she is, 
being so approbated, <laughs> tremendous approbation, because she is beautiful, she presents well, she does her homework, she does everything impeccably, she's faultless. Well, the king and the queen attended the Chelsea Flower Show and honoured his mother, who had attended it assiduously during her reign. Catherine also dropped in and she got a lot of good press coverage. The King and Queen also got good press coverage. Now, I'm here to tell you it is a truism that younger attractive people get better press coverage and more press attention than older people, no matter how attractive they are, no matter how well placed they are. You know, it's, let me put it another way, Scarlett Johansson is always gonna get far bigger press coverage and far more attention than Jane Fonda. Both beautiful women, but one is at her peak, the other has peaked. The same is true of the king and queen. My personal take on it is that Catherine's visit should have been scheduled for another day to avoid any suggestion of her presence swamping attention that the king and queen would otherwise have received. But then there are several people in the press now, some of whom are real mischief makers. I mean, Harry and Meghan do have a point, as I pointed out before, where the press are concerned, that they're going to try to get a whole dynamic going. I mean, Tom Bauer has been trying to get it going, that there is uh, a huge problem in the making between Camilla and Catherine and that Charles will be caught in the middle of it. I mean, let's put it this way. I'm not buying that. Okay, so Maury says Backgrid is Rachel Inzane's go to for Paps, allegedly sneak public photographs. She gets a cut from all the published photographs. In the catastrophic chase in New York, they were called by her and she has made money on all the photographs published, a fact unknown to her ex-royal spouse. I've read that out because that is a rumour that is making the rounds and gaining quite a bit of traction and for legal reasons I use the word rumour and make it clear that I am not alleging that Meghan has done this but it is believed by many well-established and well-situated people that that is exactly what she has done. Well, she certainly used Coleman Rayner and Jeff Rayner to humiliate, embarrass and disgrace her father according to her father and her sister. Would she have done it to Harry and against Harry? Well, my dear, any woman who can throw 
her father, her good, loving father, who bankrupted himself on her behalf and was a loving, devoted and loyal and extremely generous father by her own account to her for 36 years, is capable of doing anything. When you have head colds, anything is possible if you're not feeling well. <laughs> not, of course, saying that Megan has a head cold, but I think I feel one coming on. Ricky Isan says, Oh, yummy yum, crow! It is surely a delicacy, one that the newspaper should acclimatize itself to. I watched the Philip Schofield's attempts to discredit you. Did you agree to give an exclusive, knowing or guessing he was going to try to bring you down? Not that he stood a snowball's <laughs> chance in hell. A valiant and successful parry, if I may say so. I did think that Holly needed confirmation on a point of mental health was clumsy and she sounded almost childlike. I wonder if she was feigning stupidity to remain on side within that horrible pack mentality. It quite unsettled me. Well, Ricky Isan, yes, I love dishing up crow to jerks and I take great delight in seeing them eat it. Ricky Izan is referring to the ambush that Philip Schofield, doubtless with the connivance of Holly the Dolly, because I'll tell you before a program, everybody knows what everybody else is going to say. So she was definitely up to hair in it as well, as she has been up to hair in everything, including all the covering up of his uh, untoward behaviour, dubious behaviour, uh, rampant behaviour that has been the subject of gossip, let's use that word because that's the word he likes to use for years. And I am going to have at the end of this video, the link posted so you, if you choose to, can look at the interview that ITV posted. It's about 12 minutes long of Philip Schofield and Holly the Dolly trying to make mincemeat of me and I made mincemeat of them. What is really interesting is that in the, I think it's three years that it's been up, the comments were only allowed a month ago. Now, Philip Schofield has been thrown to the them, quite rightly so too, because rotten meat that human beings can't consume, but that will fatten wolves, should be thrown to the wolves. And in my opinion, he is rotten meat. Only in the last month have they allowed comments. But Philip Schofield was only axed a week ago. So that tells you that ITV was getting ready to axe him a month ago.
and duly axed him. Did I, to answer the question particularly, I suspected that he was going to give me a hard time because by then I had been assaulted by Philip Schofield, physically assaulted by him. He tried to push me down in front of my son at the National Television Awards, even though I'd never met him before. I mean, what sort of a man pushes down a woman under any circumstances, not even if he's the queen of the closet, should he be pushing down anybody else, and certainly not a woman, and an older woman at that, shows the level of creep and jerk, and quite frankly, filth that Philip Schofield is. And he had twice before sabotaged interviews with me where one where involving my book with Queen Elizabeth over Queen Elizabeth the Queen Mother so that he would deprive me of the opportunity to be interviewed by American and European television and that and then when I came out of the jungle they agreed a hefty sum of money for my appearance and he pulled the plug a few minutes before I was due to go on air. He's a nasty, nasty piece of work. So I by then knew he was nasty because he has the filthiest reputation in the media industry, I've got to tell you. And I expected that they were going to, well, he was going to give me a hard time. I didn't expect that she would, but she actually made a total fool of herself by failing to understand that integrity is essential to good character and to mental well-being. And without integrity, and a good character, it is impossible to have good mental health. She was really puzzled by the connection, and I'm not surprised, because she has sat on that sofa with him for many, many a year, colluding, going along with the vitriol, the viciousness, the nastiness. Now, you could say she didn't initiate it, and because it was her career, she felt, let him do what he wants, I'm going to try to keep out of it as much as possible. And I will cut her some slack on that basis. But it doesn't alter the fact that she was up to hair in everything that was going on, up to hair, and knew all about what we all knew about Philip Schofield. So, she is as innocent as Mary Magdalene was uh, in her previous profession. Let's put it that way. I'd also like to <laughs> make a point on behalf of Eamon Holmes, whose career was deliberately damaged by Philip Schofield. And because Eamon and his wife, Ruth Langsford, used to host the show on Fridays, and Philip Schofield got rid of him, doubtless because Eamon is a much better interviewer and was going to be threatening Philip Schofield's popularity and he had to be dispensed with. And he did dispense with him in a really rather nasty way. And Eamon <laughs> said on GB News that Philip was sacked and suggested that Holly was duplicitous, which she certainly is, 
when she claimed to be sad about his exit. She's jubilant, jubilant. She's not sad. He also said, oh, please stop this. He was sacked. All this nonsense about decided to step down. I'm sure you did. Here's your pre-45, now step down. He then went on to mimic Holly and said, and she says, oh, the couch will not be the same without him being there. Well, she wanted him not there. So what is she moaning about? They deserve each other, I suppose. Holly is being as false as he is, and nobody is talking about the elephant in the room. Holly knew the truth. The story is with her. That's right. Holly knew the truth. I think it will be an insult to the viewing public if Philip Schofield is given any other presenting opportunities. Philip Schofield's conduct behind the scenes has been reprehensible, reprehensible in many ways, shapes, and forms. And more than that, I will not say, except to point out that Philip Schofield and his brother, he was a very supportive of his brother, and I'm not decrying him for being loyal to his brother, but he was very supportive of his brother until his brother was found guilty, at which point Philip Schofield not only denied having a brother, having been batting on his side up to that point. But I think Philip Schofield was really worried that people were going to become aware of the fact that both brothers liked younger men. It's just that one brother rather unfortunately, if one can be decorous about it, broke the law while the other brother stayed within the law. But you know, Prince Andrew has been roundly abused and had his life destroyed because he associated with somebody who was over the age of consent, but was a teenager and was, and there was a large age gap between them. Well, my understanding is that Phil, the age gap between Philip Schofield and the runner with whom he had this, and I say this for legal reasons, legal interest in, was even greater than between Prince Andrew and Virginia Roberts. And also Virginia Roberts by her own account was on the game and got paid. While this guy was working at ITV and was therefore in a vulnerable position. Now, Philip Schofield, not a nice person. Why should we have to look at him presenting anything? I don't think we should. 
And IP22 says, Lady C, may we please have your comments on reports that Black Lives Matter is in danger of being made bankrupt as a result of its founders milking the foundation's funds to the tune of millions of dollars. Hmm. Yes, yes, Black Lives Matter, that wonderful organization. Marxist, using what was basically a good idea and, in my opinion, perverting it into something destructive, divisive, dangerous, and money-making. Well, Black Lives Matter's national organization is at risk of going bankrupt. It is $8.5 million in the red. Meanwhile, the founders have packed it up with family members, all of whom have been on million dollar wages and salaries and making million dollar amounts of money out of it. <laughs> I mean, even after Patrice Colors was made to stand down because of really her rank hand in the coffers of buying houses for millions and rewarding herself to the tune of millions. She appoints her brother. They set up two companies and were paid $1.6 million for providing professional security services for Black Lives Matter in 2022. Paul Cullors was also one of Black Lives Matter's only two paid employees during the year, collecting a salary of $126,000 as head of security on top of his consulting fees. He used to be a graffiti artist. He has absolutely no background in security. Patrice Calors defended hiring him, saying registered security firms which hired former police officers could not be trusted given the movement's opposition to police brutality. Well, that's rubbish. Many police Men don't approve of police brutality. Police brutality is not something that is desirable and not should be not accepted by anybody, including police officers. So that's utter rubbish. According to tax filings by Black Lives Matter, Damon Turner, the father of Colour's child, was paid nearly $970,000 in 2021 to help produce live events and provide other creative services. Like, what was the creative service? Mm. Oh, I think I need a new house. Mm. Let me see how I can creatively serve that up. Oh, of course, Black Lives Matter means that, well, we can play the race card. And if anybody accuses us of anything, we'll say they're racists because we've learned from Megsy Baby how that's done. And therefore, we're going to be public servants, publicly serving ourselves. Shallow Maya, or whatever her, the name is, Bowers, who took over from Patrice Colors when she was made to resign after her rank opportunism. 
also benefited handsomely from the group. His consultancy firm was paid $1.7 million for management and, cons and consulting services. <laughs> I mean, you talk about a gravy train. Daniel Edwards' firm, New Impact Partners, was paid $1.1 million for consulting services in 2022. She, there is, if I'm not mistaken, she is the sister of Raymond Howard. the Black Lives Matter board member. They ran up an $8.5 million deficit as all of them had their snouts in the trough, sucking up the money. Sucking up the money. In May 2022, it was revealed that Black Lives Matter spent more than $12 million on luxury properties in Los Angeles and Toronto, including a $6.3 million 10,000 square foot property in Canada that was purchased as part of an $8 million out of country grant. I mean, you talk about brazen. And those are the people who are defending the rights of black people. No, they're not. They are abusing their positions and they are betraying the interests of black people. I have said from quite a long time now, Black Lives Matter was a good idea that was derailed by the greed and the racism and the incompetence and the malevolence of the people running it. I hope that people who should understand that they are being betrayed by these representatives exploiting their blackness and their generosity will wake up to the fact that you cannot be adequately representative Sorry, you cannot be adequately represented, sorry, by people who have no concept of service to a greater cause and whose basic motivation is feathering their own nests and exploiting injustice and creating greater injustice as they exploit injustice for their own financial benefit. This is just so reprehensible. If white people were doing it, what would black people say? They should be saying the same thing when they are being betrayed by their own fellow men and women. I think it's a shocking disgrace because there are vulnerable people in the black community. There's no doubt about it. And they need 
proper representation, not to have their vulnerability exploited by a group of frowsy black opportunists. It's a disgrace, quite frankly. If it turns out any of them has broken the law, they should be chucked in jail. Of course, I'm not going to hold my breath because I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. We're going to hear some long story about why they actually were the victims. <laughs> yeah, the victims of Meganian concepts of public service. Because this is typical of people like them and Megan. Use colour to exploit everybody and enrich yourself. Quite frankly, just disgusting. And I hope the rackets are brought to an end sooner rather than later. And on that note, I will say I hope this has been of some interest to you. If it has, please remember to keep the comments and questions coming in so that I will know what to address that you find interesting. Okay? Thank you so much. God bless. And if you have enjoyed this, please like, share, subscribe, press the notification bell, and Godspeed.